Kevin, just to make sure it's turf. Yes, thank you for asking. Thank you. It's turf, like like astroturf. So you yeah. couldn't uh, spell it correctly then. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you a whole story of how that was botched on Fox News one day. Oh, you must imagine. Be good humans. Be good humans. Be good humans, be good humans or we will think you suck. Be good humans. Be good humans. Or we will think you suck. Welcome in. This is the Be Good Humans podcast. I'm Brian Phelps, and that there mm-hmm. is Trey Calloway. That is me. That is me. Yeah. Oh, wow. What's something? Something's up. No, 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 no. Actually, it was good. It was weird. I had a weird morning. Uh-oh. Uh oh. A little Can bit. Can it a... be aired? I mean, is this something yeah, we no, could talk yes, about? Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, I should always. Sometimes when you get drunk, you never know where you're gonna. You know? I should always clarify. I had a little bit of a crisis on my way into the studio oh, this morning. Not not. I I saw an accident mm. at an intersection, mm. and and it was really just a little fender bender, right? It was a apparently it was a mom taking her kid to day camp, and then she got hit by an older driver who turned left in front of her at the last uh, second the way it happens and yeah. thankfully nobody got hurt right okay, but okay but still i saw it happen so i pulled over anyway and and i wanted to make sure everything was cool sure. and this was the kind of funny thing i guess is that two other cars pulled over at the same time right and each of us was then suddenly out of our cars and you know we're doing what you do we're, we're saying we witnessed the crash and 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 making sure everybody's safe and helping them get to the curb and it but it was kind of almost at a certain point like almost overkill like a little bit of competitive kindness a little bit like and, and yeah. that's that's a real thing but it's for a good reason yeah because yeah. I, I i you i have this term when you when you do something kind for a person huh. it's kind of like um it's almost selfishly because it makes you feel so good. Well, that is true. Like in that moment, I was like, oh, I should do this because this is the right thing to do. Right. But suddenly everyone else was everybody doing it. Everybody else wants to be the hero. And every- <laughs> well, not everybody, but th- those three people that pulled over after you, yeah. that that is... It's wonderful, even, and I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Like, yeah, They want to be the, the the guy. They want to be, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I guess, I guess uh, that's a thing. I, I guess uh, crises uh, uh, create good humans. It to a absolutely extent. does, uh, especially in communities where that uh, that experience they go through hardships together. Mm, Whole mm-hmm, communities, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and it doesn't have to be a, a small community like we're from, yeah. but it could be a huge, gigantic city. And I have, I have the case in point for oh, you. Okay, uh, Illinois, rural area winters are brutal. This oh. is northern Illinois. Now, listen, I've stayed in the ice hotel, and it wasn't as cold no. as Illinois no, in cold, the winter time. Windy, and you know, ten foot drifts. Yeah, 10, you know, um, I, I can't t- tell you how many times I've driven my car behind a major snowplow uh-huh. just to get home. <laughs> I mean, that happens all the time. So it's brutal. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I contend, uh, I kind of learned yeah. that when a people, when a community, when a group of people, yeah. not just family and friends, yeah, but when yeah, a group yeah. of people go through something mm-hmm. together mm-hmm. and they come out the other end, you know, after three months of brutal winter, right? Um, there is a soul there. There's a, a a bond, a soul that that is like no other. And here's a, a case in point using Los Angeles. Oh, for an example. Oh, so we're not in, we're not in the uh, uh, rural Illinois, Illinois, Illinois right. anymore. Okay. Uh, the one of the earthquakes uh, happened. I oh, was God, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was right before I, I left for work. But things. This was a, a big one. And, and things actually fell down in my house. Okay, it was it was a uh, huge one. Maybe the ninety three Northridge or something yes, like yes, that. Yes, that's yeah. what it was. And uh, I was so I'm I'm driving to work because I want to get in as quick as possible mm-hmm. and calm people down and, yeah, yeah. and let them know you know we're there. And this doesn't ever happen in L A. Hmm. But there was kindness on the road. Yeah, I, I mean drivers. I yeah. mean it would be like you're at a, a stop light or stop sign and they're like no no you go you yeah. go because we were all going through that together and it absolutely brings people together they, i think it's um i think it's almost tribal you, you know inherently tribal yeah it kind of reduces us all back to or sort of bumps us back down to just being human beings yeah. and 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 i've i've same same situations like 
uh, whether it was Tulsa, where like yeah, for us it wasn't winters, it was tornadoes, right? Sure, so right sure. around this time of year, from from May to June, is Tornado Alley, and so that would always pull the community together wherever uh-huh. wherever it got impacted. But yeah, similarly, I'm not proud of this, especially I know better growing up in a place like Tulsa, but like in LA, I'm sure it's the same with you. You don't always get to know your neighbors, right? Uh, that was strange for me. I, I've said this on the, the show before, and I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. Yeah. I never remember what I say on the show. Uh, <laughs> but when we went on vacation for two weeks, we would leave we would leave the front door unlocked just in case the neighbors needed something. That's how well we knew our neighbors. Yeah, and you still do that to this I, day. I still do. Well, it drives my uh, assistant crazy. But, <laughs> uh, well, that's a, but the thing is, like, I, I off of your earthquake stuff, like, yeah. those are some of the times, some of the only times that. I've gotten to actually know neighbors when we're mm-hmm. out trying to mm-hmm. pick up chimneys that fell yep. down or whatever. Yep. And it's like, how are you? I'm okay. How are you? Yeah. And all of a sudden you just are reminded like, mm-hmm. oh, oh yeah, we're all on this big blue ball together and maybe we should uh, treat each and, other a and little bit. And- our houses are 10, 15 feet away from each yeah. other and I don't know them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I try. But I first really tried because that's my background that's the way i mm-hmm. feel mm-hmm. In, a, in a community it's setting. the way we were raised and the way we were raised and i want to get to know them and let support each other know that you know i have a dog yeah. and if you ever need or uh, you know i need to borrow a uh, uh an implement <laughs> like a uh, gardening something I, I need to know that, that <laughs> i know where you're going uh that, that, but I, I like that you feel a little I don't know, more content and safe. But when I started waving at my neighbors and they'd be like, like that, 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 just that, that reaction, like, uh, we, yeah, we don't know. It's a big city thing. Halloween comes around. Oh, yeah. And uh, I wasn't going to be home for, for trick or treaters sure. uh, this particular Halloween, or at least that's why I told the people I was actually in the back room <laughs> watching a movie. Oh, you were that neighbor. Yeah, I was that neighbor. Mm-hmm. But no, but I, uh, I just bought a big bowl of candy and mm. I put it on their doorstep. Mm, the honor ball. Yep, because they had two kids, mm-hmm, right? So sure. I just wanted, like, again, my 19th try to become yeah, friends with neighbor. these people. A sure. good neighbor. Sure. Didn't hear a word from them. Never even got my bowl back. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not uncommon for that to happen. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and yeah. that was a real uh, ex- learning experience for me. Well, I'll tell you where this is. It's making my mind go. And it's just that we're talking about small town, local community stuff or the the, the accident I experienced this morning, even yeah. in a larger scale, Los Angeles earthquakes and stuff. This makes me want to bring something up, which is not okay. easy for, for us to talk about, especially as a couple of knuckleheads who generally like to just have a good time. But um, but I, I know that I, I will never forget where I was on the morning of September 11th, 2001. OK, mm-hmm. I'm sitting in my home in Woodland Hills. I've got a couple of kids uh, it's an otherwise peaceful morning. And then when I flip on the TV and I get just a glimpse of what was happening mm-hmm. in New York City, mm-hmm. I will tell you what my next act was. I flipped on the radio because as mm-hmm. a longtime listener of you and your former partner, uh, a longtime fan of the Mark and Brian show here in Los Angeles, that's what I would do every morning. I would flip on the radio while I got ready. And... That morning, I was immediately struck by what a radically different show it was, mm-hmm. certainly what a radically different world we were suddenly living in, mm-hmm. but but specifically, the show was completely different. And, mm-hmm. and so I have to ask you, because mm-hmm. I don't think we've ever really talked about this, as a, as a, as a listener, I want to know what it was like for you mm-hmm. to be on the air that day as somebody whose job it is to be funny. Right. How does that work? What? 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 Because what, what, you have a very unique point of view. Well, thank you. And, and for, first of all, look, um, everyone has an important, and everyone an important and vital story of where they sure. were, what happened to them, mm-hmm. how they dealt with it. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll just do this quickly because it's just another story. But I, uh, I usually my, my routine is I get up in the morning. I don't turn on the news. Mm-hmm. I don't do because I like to get there early and go through all my my stacks and stacks yeah. of show prep and news. Yeah. And uh, and I just like that half hour as I'm getting ready to kind of set my mind to what is going to be in store of the day. The, a comedy sketch that I wrote the night before, yeah. or, or Eric and I. And, yeah. So. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know what was going on. Mm. And uh, I got there at about, when was it? You uh, guys would go on the air at 6 a.m. 6 a.m., maybe yeah. 5.15. Mm-hmm. 
and, and I'm driving. I'm driving down the road. I park. To, I I get to the station. I, I walk in, and Frank Sontag, the beautiful, mm-hmm. wonderful Frank Sontag, with, who runs our board. I walk in, and he goes. He looks at me. He's got a TV above the board. Yeah. He goes, "Are you seeing this?" Mm. I went, "Well, this is weird. What?" Mm-hmm. And I walk around. And I look, and it was just just basically. What had happened so far is when what everybody thought was like a Cessna. Oh yeah, the first tower. The first tower right, right, right. was hit, and smoke was coming out of it, and there was that view. So of course, mm-hmm. okay, okay. And then as we went, mm-hmm. leading up to six o'clock, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, it happened, mm-hmm. uh, and it was happening a lot of places. So we had a quick powwow with the the powers that be, and mm-hmm. and, and I I suggested, look, uh, we obviously. Uh, I, I'm not. It is not time to do an Elvis sketch or a, yeah, the, the Great yeah. White Hunter. Well, let's let's deal with this. Mm-hmm. I think the main thing is let people know that we're here. Yeah. Let people know that we're all in this. Mm-hmm. We're all doing it. Mm-hmm. And 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 maybe suggest to like go check on your na- your neighbor, you know, because uh, they might be they might need it. They might need a helping hand. Well, that's it, right? Like, it's not, there's no way you can be funny or that you would even want to be funny, but that does not diminish people's need to feel good, Yeah, especially in that moment. And and I knew a lot of people, like, I mean, there was talk like maybe we shouldn't go on the air and play a best of. No, for a number, for two reasons. We should be there for them. Right. Uh, But also a best of is, uh, you know, hopefully a show of yucks. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not a yucky thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Or a a yuck up thing. Mm -hmm. And, um. So we did the show. We we used a lot of network feeds. Mm, yeah, of course. From uh, ABC. And so, you know, just getting the latest, getting the latest. Then we'd come back and we'd do our thing and just be supportive and and and, and let them know that we're feeling the same thing mm-hmm. they felt. So mm-hmm. uh, for better or for worse, we got through it. And um, I remember this. And this is just a personal thing for me. I remember uh, we said our, our goodbyes. I said, be good humans. I took off my headphones, mm-hmm. I put them down. We were, all of, the whole staff was just exhausted because working and this is going on. Yeah. Well, um, I got up, I walked out of the studio, down the hallway to the program director's office. Mm-hmm. And the program director at the time was the lovely, the talented, the beautiful, the big hearted Rita Wilde. I love her. Yeah, we gotta have her on the show sometime. Yeah. But uh, I walked into her office and, and she was just sitting at her desk and she's, you know, sad and yeah. being emotional, uh, uh, physically just like down like this. And I, uh, I sat down on her couch, mm-hmm. didn't say a word to her. She didn't say a word to me. And I started bawling mm-hmm. my eyes out. I the, exhausted, right. it, but I hadn't bawled that hard since I was like five. And I yeah. just couldn't stop crying because of what has happened yeah. To a, in the world, it, yeah. it was shattering for so many of us. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you sharing that story. I mean, it's, uh, I know this, uh, maybe other people don't know this who are just used to you making them laugh all the time. And there are millions of those people, but I also, <laughs> I know and love about you that you're oh. a, you're a softy. You've got a heart a mile wide and, and, oh, and, and, but I, you, so you. you, you could be born without a heart and, and still be deeply impacted by mm-hmm. the events of that day that, that are still far reaching to this day in the ways that they have impacted far people. reaching. So, so um, I tell you what, why don't we take a little break? Okay. And when we come back, we're going to be talking to someone that uh, not experiencing from the fringe like all of us, mm-hmm. millions and millions mm-hmm. all over the world did, but he was directly involved in it. Mm-hmm. And in his experience, the experience that he had being directly involved in it, he did something that not only was life changing for him, but life changing for millions and millions of people. Oh wow! Hook. Okay, that's Hooked a. You. I mean, that's you a guys, powerful hook. You guys are really hooked, right? They're hooked. Are you hooked? We're hooked. Don't thumb up. All right, stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> And Brian Phelps, we are back. Yes, we are, Trey Calloway. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, you ready for this? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. 
quick setup. Due to the uh, United States airspace being shut down mm-hmm. following the 9-11 attacks, yeah. our guest today spent five days stranded with many, many other airline passengers mm-hmm. in the small Canadian town of Gander, Newfoundland. Oh, yeah, yeah. And because of that experience, uh, he went on to become the founder of Pay It Forward 9-11. Mm. We welcome, honored to welcome, Kevin Turf. Kev, uh, how are you doing? Hi, Kevin. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's great. It's an honor to be here. Tell us about Gander, first of all. It, how big is it? <laughs> uh, back in 2001, when I arrived there unexpectedly, it was a population of about 9,000 people. And over the course of a few hours, 38 jumbo jets land, and all of a sudden they've got, they basically doubled their population with 7,000 unexpected refugees. Wow. Unbelievable. So where where were you headed to initially before your flight was diverted and you wound up in Gander? I was flying directly into New York City airspace. I was finishing a European vacation, took off from Paris, France in the morning of September 11th. And uh, back then they had one TV monitor over the uh, over the ceiling with the with the flight path. And so we're over the ocean a couple of hours out before we should be ready to land in New York. And all of a sudden, we there's a sudden drop in elevation. Mm. And when you're over the ocean, that's not cool. That's yeah. not, oh, and, and then a bank to the right. Are you getting any explanation at this point? Not yet. Mm. And uh, so all of a sudden, I look up at the monitor and we're change course flying to the north pole it looks like yeah uh, I've been, you know what's going on right and i thought well maybe we're just taking a weird route to get back to new york and then finally we were on an air france flight and so the pilot came on the pa and first in french said something something didn't understand but he said the word terrorism in english mm. and we saw the flight attendants like gasp and um uh-huh. Then um, a couple of minutes later, in broken English, says, due to a terrorist attack in the United States, we'll be landing in Gander. And that was it. Wow. And I'm I just a guess. I'm just a guess here. But you had never been to Gander previous to this. I honestly, even after we landed for hours, I wasn't sure what country we were in. <laughs> Are we in Iceland? Are we in Canada? Right. I had never heard of Newfoundland. But, I mean, to get that announcement, and that's all the announcement you got, due to a terrorist a terrorist mm. attack, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we are going to land in Gander. Mm. And you that's like, what? Tell me more or yeah. something. And you didn't know. They wouldn't. When did they? Well, it was hours later. I mean, mm. we... Uh, and, of course, you have to remind your, ourselves that, like... Nobody had, you know, there was no internet on the plane. There was no, you know, I had a cell phone, but no one had international coverage back then. Right. And so even after we landed, it was, we got little blips of information, but it probably wasn't until about one o'clock local time when the pilot came on the PA again and said, uh, you know, the... World Trade Center has collapsed. Mm-hmm. The what you know, the <sighs> the Pentagon was hit. That you know, and mm-hmm. we're like, what, what? And nobody wanted to believe it. It was like, of course, you know, or of course, just, it seemed impossible. Yeah, but we couldn't verify it. I couldn't. I tried to contact, you know, my parents and who I knew would they would be worried. They knew I was flying into New York that day. Right, just, you right. could not get through. Oh, and boy. so, a long story short, it t- we did not see it with our own eyes for twelve hours when we finally arrived at a community college, which became a refugee shelter. So that okay. was my next question. I, I, I Presumably you stayed on the tarmac for a while or in the plane, and, the, and then what happened? Hours. 15 hours. 15 hours on, on a plane. The yeah. plane? Wow, on that, the I, plane? Wow, I'm guessing the peanuts were gone after about the first 30 <sighs> minutes, but but then... They, they all, yeah, they kept replaying movies, and but the only good part was they kept plying us with this, every little mini bottle of liquor that they had. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. Roll so, out the Ambien in a wheelbarrow. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, okay, so 15 hours on the plane, then they get you off. What what is your first experience of arriving in Gander? You're looking around. What's happening? Where do they take you? Well, it was, um, I'll never forget when I, uh, you know, there's, it becomes late night. You know, it's now seven, eight o'clock at night. And I look, I've got a seat on the plane over the wing uh, window seat. And so I look out and I see this long line of school buses and they're coming down the, the runway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's when it hit me that they've been preparing all day to help us get off the planes. Wow. So the first thing, you know, now years later, looking back at all this, 
the first thing you have to even question is like this is a, it's a tiny airport there's like you know there, there was not room for any more than one plane now they've got 38 jumbo jets oh. so but the first thing they did was the mayor decided that they would let us in to their community into their country mm-hmm. they let us into their homes and their schools and so we get off the plane and we walk into the terminal and it is like a party has just erupted there are mm-hmm. people that have brought in Kentucky Fried Chicken and t- boxes of donuts and sandwiches and you know. bottled water and things, and there is take what you want, free. You and, know, just and presumably no customs checks or any of that stuff. No, there was there, there was, was there was very very very. They were very they were concerned that there might be terrorists on some of those planes. Sure. Right. So they there was a long line to get through security, and then I managed to get to the one or two of the the pay phones that they had i called my parents collect and they answered and i heard their voice and i cried and they cried sure. and, and i said i think i'm in you know nova scotia like no you're not we've we've tracked you you're in <laughs> the gander, gander newfoundland and probably thinking even then at that point for a little while like well i'll be here for a matter of hours you know or but but th- those hours turned into literal days right 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 and uh, so yeah we knew finally when the pilot let us off he said you're we're, we don't know where they're taking you we don't know what they'll have so take you could only you couldn't even take your luggage because um they were worried about right, bombs. Sure, and right. so uh, what we did was we took the pillows the back when they had pillows on planes <laughs> took the pillows off the planes and the only thing we had in our overhead compartment were two bottles of Grey Goose vodka that we bought at the <laughs> duty free shop in Paris, which came in really handy. All right. And uh, and then a camera and I had a video camera. And I started documenting what was going on there. And wow. they you were led to where initially? Well, we first, so the next thing you know, they're like, hurry, get some food, get on the school bus now. And like, OK. And then so we start the school bus takes off and we're driving and uh, we it's it's in the middle of a forest. You know, there is yeah. nothing there. Mm-hmm. It is super dark. Yeah, it was a little bit anxious. We didn't they didn't even say we're taking you to the College of the North Atlantic, which is a very nice community college there. And they didn't say how long it would take. And they actually took a route, which was the quickest way there. But if we had gone through the town, it would have made me feel a little bit better. Like they had there was a Walmart there and there was, you know, fast food restaurants sure. and things. And but we went through this, the back road, basically, it was the quickest way to the college. And so anyway, finally walked into this community college and they had television set up for, um, you know, all the, they canceled school for the next day. Volunteers had come in. They pushed back all of the chairs in every classroom because that's where they knew mm-hmm. we would be sleeping in the classrooms mm-hmm. of that college. I mean, this is extraordinary. And, and it's I'm sure it was less in in the moment. I'm sure when they weren't telling you where you were going initially or whatever, I'm sure it was less about withholding information and more about these people in this small town just trying to react as quickly as possible and mobilize to help a large number of people from all over the world try and feel safe right so thus begins the um change your life moment uh that you experience this kindness and not just for uh, an hour when you got off the plane to get a a a bucket of chicken but Mm -hmm. uh it went on for days and days and days and the small community these these i don't know how many people how 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 large is gander you said about nine thousand yeah, about yeah. nine thousand small, small, and they just banded together. They, there's a million things they could have been doing, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, uh, to, but they came together to help those in need. And this is when you saw something that um, kind of started your uh, pay it forward nine eleven. It, it kind of inspired it, correct? Yeah. So what? Like just a couple other examples that were just sort yeah. of mind blowing was that you know they. They opened up at the college they because they knew we wanted to talk to our families and our offices and so they opened up their phones and so people we ran up a thirteen thousand dollar phone bill i learned mm. when i was writing i was writing my memoir channel of peace stranding gander and i eleven. so i, I said, like mm. how much did all those phone calls thirteen thousand dollars and we tried just like can we give you money for the call 
no, 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 you would do the same, they kept saying. <laughs> like, oh, I don't know. We probably would find a way to profit <laughs> off of <laughs> And, you know, another time where we finally just after, you know, with the, one thing they didn't have the college was showers. And so by day three, we we stink. We need a shower. We need a change of clothes. So we hear there's a Walmart there. So my partner, Kevin, and I, we head out. We're walking down the street. And all of a sudden, because uh, uh, it was like two miles away, it was a beautiful day. The car pulls over, rolls down the window. Hey, what are you doing? Like, oh God, we're sorry. Well, you know, we're we're new, we're just visitors, and mm -hmm. they're like, well, hop in. We'll we'll give you a ride. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys. But my mom always said, never get into a car with strangers. <laughs> right. I won't even get into a car with Brian. So yeah. smart to, <laughs> you, to do that. So this happens three times, and like, so finally, you know, we said, like, I think we better get in. We're never going to get there. And so we we met this nice couple, chat up them up. They take us to Walmart, you know, offered to give them some money for gas going out sure. of the way. No, no, you would do the same, they kept saying. What they're talking about is the golden rule. Yeah. The golden rule, treat others like you want to be treated. Yeah. And so I came back to Austin, Texas, where I, when I finally, it took us seven days, finally, the whole, whole trip mm -hmm. uh, took seven days uh, to just to get home. But when I did, I wondered, would we do the same? Would a small town in Texas, would they do the same? Would mm -hmm. even a big town, it was like Austin, would, they, would we do the same? And mm -hmm. and it was and it wasn't so much that, that some people helped out. It was that everybody helped yeah. out. There was not a stove in Gander that was not turned on cooking <laughs> food. They, I mean, from some, there was one man I've become a good friend with. His job was to wake up at four in the morning and make toast. Who was organizing this, Kevin? Who, who kind of organized all this? Were there like certain leaders of of, uh, of the community, or uh, because uh, this is a lot of organization? Which who picked that guy to make toast at four <laughs> o'clock in the morning? They just they, they it was the old fashioned phone tree. They you yeah. know went, like at the community college, the president like said, okay, we need you need everybody everybody to help out and yeah. and just get up here to the school and and i'll the part that i will never forget was when so it's now midnight i finally been watching television these terrible images and i've i had a credit card i could have bought a hotel room there's only three hotels in this town yeah. okay and those had to be used for the flight crews sure so for the first time in my life i had to rely on the kindness of a stranger mm. to give me a pillow mm. to put my head mm. and so at midnight a young teenage boy walks in there with two pillows and an inflatable air mattress and i thought man i want to sleep on the air mattress instead of the cold tile floor of this mm -hmm. classroom and so i go get it and i just got choked up you yeah. know and i said i said thank you mm -hmm. and he's like you bet and turns around and leaves and you know i no idea he probably never got his pillow back i don't know but uh, it was just really powerful. I mean, very powerful, very powerfully inspiring, and it inspired all kinds of different things. And by the way, if, if for starters, if this story sounds at, at all familiar, it may be because if you're watching or listening, maybe you've seen the Tony Award winning musical Come From Away, which is based on a variety of these true stories from those days in Gander, including Kevin's, by the way. There's actually a character in the play named Kevin T., uh, who I yep. think is at least in part based on you, but it, it not only inspired a Tony Award winning Broadway musical, it inspired you directly to create Pay It Forward 9, 9 uh, 11. Can you tell us more about that vision and 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 what you have set forth to do since? So uh, because people kept saying, no, you can't pay us back. You can't do it. I said, all right, I can't pay it back. So I'm gonna, I borrow an idea from the film, Pay It Forward. Mm -hmm. And so I had a company in Austin at the time, and we had about 40 staff. So on the morning of September 11th, on the first anniversary of 2002, I closed the doors of my office, and I handed out $100 bills, paired people up in teams of two, mm -hmm. and said, go take this out and spend this money in the community any way you want, and then come back and let's talk about it and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I wasn't sure if the staff would be into it or not, but they were, and they came back because they went out with the assignment to tell people, remember, we said we would never forget the lives that were lost, mm -hmm. but then to also tell the story about what happened to their boss who had this better side of humanity experience. And so, um, you know, people started buying, you know, cups of coffee, 
one team went and bought a savings bond for a single mother who gave birth to a child who was born on 9-11. Mm-hmm. And wow. just, it went on and on and on. And finally over, we weren't doing it for publicity, but people found out about it mm-hmm. and then they wanted to get involved and do something too. Mm-hmm. And so it became a way for people to say, rather than just watching those images of the planes hitting the towers every year, this becomes a tradition where people go out and do at least three good deeds for strangers and then ask that person to do the same. Mm, and so it does create a ripple effect. And long story short, now we are on our 23rd annual attempt at this this year. And we now do, um, we have a, a national board of directors and we have a uh, um, events in Washington and DC and uh, New York City, Austin, Texas, where I was from and Kansas City. And it, last year we had people in 45 states and 12 countries that, that pledged to do this. You inspire audiences around the world yeah. with this talk. And I love the name of it, The Ripple Effect of Compassion, mm-hmm. which focuses on kindness of str- to strangers, immigrants, and refugees. Not the people that are in our lives. Not not our family. Right. I mean, you're going to get that. And not not our, our friends. But people that are strange, strangers to you that maybe think different than you. Maybe mm-hmm. they look different from you. Mm-hmm. But to be, maybe it's not always going to work, but you'll get uh, positive reactions uh, many more times than negative. Mm-hmm. Um, but to to just pay it forward to someone that you don't know, and that that's the important thing behind this. Right, and, that, and you were so right that unfortunately over the years, you know, in a time before hashtags, 2002, man, we were all saying, united we stand. Mm-hmm. It was everywhere. It was pervasive. And now we could not be farther from that. And we are so siloed. And people will tell me like, oh, well, yeah, I would do what they did in Gander, you know, in my neighborhood, but not the other neighborhood mm-hmm. where those people yes. live, you know, mm-hmm. or, you know, people like they want to help their neighborhood or their religion or their community, but not 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 their other country you know Mm -hmm. so in gander they had people from 90 countries that they allowed Mm -hmm. in even some from uh middle eastern countries Mm -hmm. that like so there was great reason to be concerned but they took a chance the mayor told me so we weren't going to let you rot on those planes Mm -hmm. and where people need help and you help them Mm -hmm. and the people stepped up they really stepped up like you said not just a few of them but most all of them right (laughs) <laughs> wow. Well, really? uh, would you tell us a little bit more about some of the different kinds of random acts of kindness that you guys uh, 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 get rolling every year and uh, and and let us know when when things sort of kick off uh, f- for for you this year in 2024? Yeah, thank you. So for, I'll just say it multiple times. Please uh, go visit our website at payitforward911.org. And we're asking people to to register their pledge. It's free, but just tell us where you're going to do some sort of good deed. And what we have now is we re- opened it up so it's not just on September 11th, but we say we have 11 days of kindness campaign oh, cool. and asking people to do those three good deeds. That way we can get more schools involved, yeah. more churches, sure. businesses. And so um, there are, the with, and the great part about it is it's, it's whatever is up to someone's imagination mm-hmm. to and to develop what they want to do. But one of my favorite stories actually took place back in Canada. Canada participates in this too, even though they're the people who are the, the kindness superstars. So the, the Broadway company of uh, uh, come from away, uh-huh. they, when I, in 2016, I stepped down from my company and all of a sudden I had nobody to help me pull this off. Mm-hmm. And so I went to the producers and I said, Hey, will you, continue my tradition and they said sure so they gave hundred dollar bills to the cast and the crew and the band wow. of every production all around the world and so they go out and do good deeds for strangers and then they come back and talk about it at the end of one of their following shows mm-hmm. the next night and uh, so but this one uh so this uh was a actor and a stage manager they were paired together in toronto canada and they each got a hundred dollar bill from the producers and they said you know we could probably do something on our own too. So they pulled out a hundred each, a hundred dollars. So now they're hundred dollars or three hundred dollars. Mm. And they went. There was a woman who kept bringing her classes to see the show from Northern Ontario. Her name was Peg. And so Peg 
agreed to organize a pay it forward event for her entire uh, grades one through eight. Mm. And uh, so she takes $300 and buys $300 worth of carnations, gives them out to the kids. The kids write little messages. Remember, we said never forget, pay it forward, 9-11. Puts a little messages on each little carnation, hands them out to the kids. The kids go out into the community. And so I get the report back the next day that there's this one particular girl who she came back and wrote an essay about her experience. Mm. She and her friend, they went to a supermarket and so we saw this lady and she looked like she was having a terrible day. Mm -hmm. She said, and so we decided to give her the flower and the fl and the lady started to cry. Oh. And so yeah. they said, she said, how much for the flower? No, 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 it's, it's free. It's if you want to do a, a good deed, you can pay it forward. And she started to cry some more. And she said, you have no idea how much this means to me. Mm -hmm. My daughter died yesterday. Oh, oh boy. Wow. Well, wow. So then she goes back and she writes about in an essay, you never know what people are going through. Yes. So we ought to be more kind. Of and, course. You know, uh, and I'm sure you'll agree that if you don't uh, have $100 or $200 or $300 yeah. Yeah. to pay it forward, there are all kinds of ways you can, uh, endless ways. Um, you talk about, you have this term, and I love this term, because it's what I feel when I do something kind for someone, mm -hmm. and, and I think I mentioned it earlier in the show or some sometime, mm -hmm. I'm always repeating myself. You may know this already about me, <laughs> but- um, As long as you don't repeat it's yourself. A, <laughs> <laughs> but it's selfish. It's a selfish thing that I want. Mm -hmm. That that it, Selfish because it makes me feel great. Right. Not about I'm the hero, but it makes me feel great to see the joy. Yeah. So there are, if you can't afford $100, yeah. there are many just, for instance, here's here's something, um, uh, and I you, you might have a, a bunch of these that that you you all do, but uh, I like to recognize the people that feel invisible. Oh yeah, um, yeah. the elderly yeah. walking down the street. You mm -hmm. can just tell by the look on their face they got to get somewhere. They want to go into the diner, mm -hmm. get their whatever, mm -hmm. and then get home, and uh, nobody would say hi to them. So I always do. Yeah. Again. It doesn't always work out. Yeah, yeah, Sometimes yeah. I get a look like, you, were you going to hit me? Yeah. Like, and just hi. The way I look at you. Yeah, the way, most of the time. <laughs> and most of the time I do. Yes. Uh, but uh, a, a busboy, yeah. uh, a, a service guy, yeah. uh, you know, any kind of maintenance, uh, uh, cleaning ladies, and the list goes on and on and yeah, on. Yeah. Just the people that never get talked to, never be, that never gets acknowledged. And, and that's a great way to pay it forward. Something that we should all be doing every day. But Kevin, this is a concerted effort on your part and the part of your organization for at the very least in those 11 days leading up uh, to the anniversary of 9-11. Yeah. Like, let's really triple down on this. Let's yes. find our own creative, inventive mm -hmm. ways uh, to 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 bring some joy to people, to to spread these random acts of kindness, and then let it exponentially increase. For every one I do for you, you do three more for someone else, yeah. and and so on and so forth. It's a it's an extraordinary effort. So yes, uh, please, uh, if you want to get involved in this, the first stop should be to go to payitforward nine one one dot org. We're absolutely also going to make a link on uh, our website, BeGoodHumansPodcast.com, uh, to the PayItForward911.org site. So definitely start there. Do it year-round, people. Uh, that's what we're here to encourage you to do in general, but absolutely. It's like feeling it, uh, the Christmas spirit year-round. A little bit, you, you yeah, know? yeah. You always wish, like, oh, Christmas is almost over. It's just been so great. Everybody's so great. Yeah. yeah. You could do but you're, yeah, you know, you're, you're right. You're exactly right about there is a feeling, and I did a TEDx talk called the, about the helper's high. Mm -hmm. that, that's the feeling that when you do this, you sense this feeling of euphoria that lasts for several minutes. That's the mm -hmm. term. And so then it's like, you know, being kind and compassionate yeah. is like it is our muscle is our, our excuse me, our brain is a muscle. And just like all muscles, it needs to be trained. And so we can when you start doing these things, you know, just throughout these 11 days, it starts to get you in the habit. And then what's amazing in my book, I interviewed other people who they started doing it at my company. And then like, for example, there was a husband of one of my employees who he said, you know what? I used to be a guy who I saw people pulled over on the side of the road and I just, I, I wasn't going to stop, you mm -hmm. know, 
He said, but now because of what you all got me to do, now I stopped. And I just recently stopped. There was a guy who ran out of gas. So I picked him up, brought him to the gas station, right. waited for him to get the gas can and the gas, brought him back to his car. So he said, thank you. Mm, yeah. So I you, mean, yeah. these are. And you didn't even need to thank you, but it felt great when you got it, right? Right. These exactly. Are, these are great moments of humanity. I personally have three takeaways here, Brian. Oh, Number God. one, I can't <laughs> wait to go to Gander. I really oh, want to go right? to Gander. Yeah. Right. Number two, if I travel anywhere, I'm going to travel always with two bottles of Grey Goose in my luggage. Right. For sure. And and, num and number three, wherever I go, I want to go with Kevin Turf, because this is someone who has taken notice of the good things strangers did for you in the wake of so much unimaginable tragedy. And created something marvelous out of it. Truly uh, has Globally. decided to pay it forward literally by doing so many kindnesses of your own for others. You are the absolute definition of a good human, Kevin, and we cannot thank you enough for taking the time to join us today to tell us your story and most importantly to tell us about Pay It Forward 9-11. And I should tell you, Kevin, that usually when we have uh, we have guests every show, but usually when, when they ha have come in and, and they're on like a, a zoom situation like you are um we usually send them a very nice be good humans hat yes uh but for you um a handle a handle of gray goose vodka <laughs> <laughs> with a mug to pour it into you yes. deserve it yes <laughs> fantastic well thank you for the opportunity and thank you for sharing this effort and we do hope that everyone uh, especially in california yeah uh, really want to get more participation. Extremely well done, Kevin. Yeah. Thank you. A pleasure meeting you. Absolutely. Thank you. Be good humans. Be good humans. Be good humans. Or we will think you suck. I think mean, I think we were both worried about that one a little bit. Well, only because obviously of the subject matter and the way we like to present our show with uh, fun and yeah. lightheartedness. And uh, again. 20% of our episodes will probably be a little heavy subjects, yeah, a yeah. little heavy. 70%, 80% will be, you know, just fun and lighthearted. But, um, but yeah, we one... were worried about it. We were concerned, like, how do we, you know, hey, let's talk about 9-11, eh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, you, because you yeah. even after 23 years, yeah. I mean, it brings back a lot of dark and painful memories right. for everybody. Right. But the thing about it is when you reframe it the way Kevin is doing, mm -hmm. Uh, as as a reason to do random acts of kindness, mm -hmm. uh, it gives people all kinds of hope, which which I know is basically what we are hoping to do with this show. Yeah, we want to entertain people, absolutely. So you know, let's let's finish strong. I love your summations. Go, go ahead, entertain people. <laughs> oh, see, just yeah, for a second. There, there you go. <laughs> uh, I can tell you that uh, this was entertaining to me. Yes. All right. His yes. uh, in a topic that's mm. it's not obviously uh, a fun topic to do and he was wonderful yeah, amazing a great speaker and had a sense of humor and all that yep. but in this time i think we were both concerned as we talked about earlier yep. about how do we make this a little more like we <laughs> like the shows yeah so he mentioned gray goose vodka a couple of times yep. in the early part of the episode yes and i, I wrote down i i don't know if you can see this mm -hmm. gray goose vodka because that's going to be my big finish <laughs> i'm going to do a joke about that <laughs> As soon as, as soon as Trey gets done, you know, talking, <laughs> oh, man. I'm I'm gonna I you know big finish, big punch, and wow. we're gonna have a great time. He'll laugh. It's gonna be all great. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm ready. Wait for my yes. two. <laughs> we're gonna great goo. And then you mention it like, oh. Okay. But this is the entertaining part yes. because both of us. <sighs> Oh, sensitive, yes. you know, to to yeah. trying to make this a, as fun as possible, yeah. as well as dealing with what was going on. Mm. Um, we were both looking for uh, the, the big finish. Yes, yeah. And, I mean, uh, it wasn't your fault. I mean, it was like we. I didn't know you had thought of it. You didn't know I had thought of it. Right. To bring it full circle, it yeah. was like the comedy version of me and three other cars full of people pulling over at the same time right. to sort of try and help. Exactly. We're, we're both in that's there a, like, that's what, a do great we, what do we do? So. I, I think, uh, you know, uh, maybe in the in the future, we'll just do this. But I'll do it really subtly. Yeah. I'll do it subtle like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you'll just say out loud, Great, great Goose! goose. <laughs> I got a great gooch punch. All right. In the meantime, do us a favor. Go visit our <laughs> website at BeGoodHumansPodcast.com where you absolutely will find a link for the Pay It Forward 911.org. Mm -hmm. uh, but also where you can tell us, and please do this, tell us about the good humans in your lives, uh, people that you think we should meet that would be good for us to talk to. Also, give us your best pointers on how to be a good human. We could always use a few of those. 
I, there's is there anything else? No, there's not anything uh, else. Let's I think quit we'll, while we're behind. We're, we're gonna go get a gray goose, and we're gonna enjoy that right uh, now. A hundred percent. Is there is there a bar? Grant, do you know if there's a? I mean, really seriously, celebrate the a wonderful show. Let's, yeah, we're gonna go find go. it. Yeah, we're gonna find it. Do you think he'd mind if I get? Well, Kevin's not hearing us, right? He's, no. Uh, do you think Kevin would mind if I get a kettle one? Because you know I like it better than. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Are you really? Yeah. Wow. I am. Wow. I am. Uh, and then we're gonna go get a drink, and yeah. you guys do us a favor. Be good humans. Bye bye. Be good humans. Be good humans. Be good humans, or we will think you suck. Be Good Humans is executive produced by Brian Phelps, Trey Calloway, and Grant Anderson, with associate producers Sean Fitzgerald and Clementine Calloway in partnership with Straw Hut Media. Please like, follow, and subscribe, and remember be good humans.